Hello, everybody. Today, we have yet another very interesting interview. Ray has agreed to come on for a second interview. Now, I do want to preface with the fact that the topics that are going to be covered in today's interview are on the darker side of our reality. But the intention of covering such topics is to be able to shed light and bring awareness to the darkness in order to perhaps being able to change it, being able to raise awareness of the truth that's happening around the world today. Now, the interview is going to start with the darker side of our reality, and it's going to end with raising certain actions that we can all do, talking about certain things that we can all do to actually make a change. So if it is difficult for you to listen to what you're about to hear, I understand, but I encourage you to listen to it in its entirety. Take in the truth of what's going on around the world today, and what you do from there is up to you. But remember, going inwards is what each and every one of us needs to do. This is not about finding a savior. This is not about looking for a savior. This is about understanding that each and every one of us have the power to make a change in the world today. And the intention of this interview is to raise awareness, but more so to empower each and every one of you to show you that you can be the person that makes that change. So Ray, thank you very much for being here and giving us your time once again. You're welcome. Before we continue, I know you have a lot of questions today. I just want to mention to you and to your viewers certain quests that I have and to make sure that me and you have an understanding about everything. I like to make sure that you understand, as I told you before, you cannot ask me any personal questions. Please do not try to invade my privacy through your questions and don't ask me about anything already published by you regarding TLS, myself. If you have any questions regarding that, just refer back to the papers. I'm sure all of your questions will be answered through the papers if you want to put the time into reading them. Let's save time right now. It doesn't make sense. I want to make sure that your viewers understand. I am with TLS. However, I am not the spokesperson for TLS. I'm here... I'm here at my... My free will and choice. As a matter of fact, the spokesman here is you, and they basically chose you. You agreed. It's important for me that people will understand that I'm not the one who put you up to it. I'm not for it. I'm against it. Not that I'm against TLS. I just, I would prefer if you wouldn't do this to put yourself up front. Become a spokesman. You, you are dealing with powers you might not understand. And the same reason I'm hiding my identity. Part of the reason is security. My security and my family's security. It's also your security. I care for you. I love you. I don't want to see you getting hurt. And you might get hurt. This is... I don't know where this is going to go. But it's getting crazier by the day. More information is being released. Again, it's against my will. But I cannot control what TLS does. I can only control what's in my possession. Any opinions I give in this interview, it's my opinion only, and it has nothing to do with the policy of TLS, the terms and conditions of anything. Any universal information I will express here today again. Maybe I don't know, depending on the questions you're going to have. It's information acquired through my experience with the information that was given to me. I'm not a type of guru a prophet that makes predictions. This is not me. That's not what I do. I understand that you probably are going to edit this video, and I'm okay with that. I want to make sure you understand. I ask to review the final draft before it goes to publication. TLS will do the same, probably after me, and only after you get approval to publish it. You can do it, and this video will become your property, and you could do with it whatever you like. It's your property. I want to make sure that your viewers know and understand that I urge you, and this is important, that I urged you from the very beginning not to take the position of the spokesman and get involved with it. I understand your curiosity took over you. That's what happened to me when I started. It's just, I have the experience, and I think you... I'm against publicity.
I'd like to keep everything quiet and anonymous. It's okay to work behind the scenes, but you chose a different path. But it's your choice. You are not forced into it. And again, I'm against it. Not because I'm against TOS, I'm not. I'm working with them. Great organization. They do many great things. But when it comes specifically to you, I would urge you again not to do this. Before you continue with what you have to say, all I want to say is, number one, I, I appreciate the concern. I appreciate the love that you have for me and the fact that you're worried about my own safety. But the way that I personally see it is if I don't do it and I don't step up to the table, then who else will? And if I want somebody else to, but I'm not going to do it myself, then who am I to speak about somebody else stepping up to the table if I'm not going to take that upon myself to do it? So again, I appreciate the concern. I completely disagree with you. I think now is the time and now has always been the time and somebody has to do it. And if nobody else is going to do it, including yourself, then I'm going to stand up and I'm going to do it. That's why I agreed to be in this position in the first place. And I do want to say for the record that I'd rather not be alive in a world that operates in the way that it operates today. And if I die on the way, so be it. At least I know that I did something that I enjoyed, that I did my absolute best to try and make a change on the way out. My answer to you is, I'm not going to say not to do anything. I'm saying you could do the same thing and even better. Behind the scenes, it doesn't have to be out in the open. But let's agree to disagree on this fact, and it's fine. I just want to express my feelings, and I wanted you and the viewers to understand where I'm coming from. Okay. It's not from a bad place. It's only from a good place. And the last thing I just want to say before you start with your questions when I'm going to answer you and talk to you, I prefer not to mention names of individuals or families. I like to refer to the people either as the good guys or the evil doers. And you will understand, and I'm sure your viewers will understand where I'm going with it. I don't think names should be mentioned here. It's not good for me and not good for you. And definitely not good for your video. Your video might be erased somehow by somebody, and it's a seed as a problem. So let's stay away from names, although I'm sure you'll understand what I'm talking about, because we all understand where we're coming from. So please continue. My first question for you is, first of all, why'd you agree to, to a second interview? It was hard enough to get you for the first one. So what allowed you, what caused you to say okay for the second interview? Well... The main reason, you're a major pain in the ass. <laughs> Let's start with that. However, I understand what you're trying to do. I understand what TLS is trying to do. Your passion is awareness, and I'm with you on that. Although I do other things, but I understand where you are coming from. The problem is awareness is not just awareness. You need to get to universal awareness if you want to get where you want to get, in order to get your target and to aim for your target. The target should be universal awareness as opposed to individual awareness or awareness of separation. This world today is in a world of universal separation. This is why you see all the troubles that you see, the wars and the disease, fake disease. People are not united. Your motto is unification. For you to get where you want to get, you have to bring universal awareness. It's something you have to learn about. Universal awareness. To get to it, number one, you have to find a way to destroy or eliminate your ego. My ego. Everybody's ego. The world has to lose his ego. Otherwise, we cannot move forward. And that's a very, very difficult task. You can't move forward without that. Ego is a problem. That's the main obstacle in our way moving forward. So again, I'm all for awareness. But I don't think you ever spoke about universal awareness. People don't understand the difference between individual awareness that separates you from the rest, which makes awareness of separation. And today, the world is fed by universal separation, which is awareness of universal separation. And that's the problem. Mm. You gotta make it awareness. A universal awareness that everybody is together. Everybody is one. And again, it's a big, big... I just open maybe a big subject because now you go into religion. 
It's another form of separation. My God is better than your God. This guy is a Muslim. I'm a Jew. This guy is a Christian. And it's a problem. You not only have to fight people's psyche, now you have to fight the religion in this world. And religion is a major obstacle as much as the ego. But it all stems out of ego. So I just want to put that out there. Why did I agree to it? Again, I want to be part of this fight for awareness. I just want to make sure that you study this more and learn about this more. And understand that you, to bring awareness, awareness is not enough. It's got to be a universal awareness. That means me and you are one. Your next door neighbor, somebody in Africa or Europe, we are all one. This is the oneness we always speak about. And again, from there, you gotta talk about religion. You bring God into the picture. It's a very, very big and important subject. So to attack it from your point of view is not going to be easy. So you have a big job in front of you. It's a big mission. So take it from there. Okay. Okay. Before we get to the God topic, because that was a big question that was brought in as well. In our first interview together, people didn't understand where God fit into the picture of everything you were speaking about. So we'll get there. But before we even get there, I want to ask you, number one, have you ever spoken about these topics on camera before other than our last interview together? No. How long have you been working with TLS for? 12 years. 12 years. When was it? January of what year? 2010. My first encounter, my first experience was January 2010. Do you know why you were approached and chosen by TLS in the way that you were? Today I have a better idea of why. I was asking those questions all the time from the beginning. Um, I don't like to speak about myself personally, but I can tell you, anybody who's going to be chosen is being chosen for his character, his actions, his actions in previous reincarnations, and... Everyone is born with certain traits. I'm talking about a certain energetic field. We all have a specific dimension, frequency, and vibration that we are born with. This is all energy. Again, energy you can go back to God. God is energy. But we are not going to get into it right now. Everybody has a specific... You can measure it. If you remember when I did some energy work on you, in the past, I could give you actual numbers of your dimension, of your vibration, of your frequency. It's, you could actually measure it. As you know, I don't measure it with machines. I do it with my hands. I do it with my body. I do it by connecting into you. I can come up with certain information about your body, your soul, and you found it very interesting at the time. Again, it's not something I was born with. It was something that I learned how to do. But I'm guessing if I didn't have those, those qualities in the beginning when I was born with them, I wouldn't be able to do it. Everybody has a specific energy, vibration, and... For example, if I go on a job with somebody, usually I'll go with somebody. I choose this someone because it fits my dimension, my vibration, my frequency at that time. And if it fits the conditions of the mission we're about to encounter. So, let's assume I have to travel to Europe to do a specific job in a specific country and to do a specific thing. And I want to take you, for example. Because I need to use your energy for something else, for something specific. I'm sorry, but if you don't have those traits in you, I'm not going to take you. I'm going to choose somebody else. Are those traits something that somebody's born with or something they develop throughout this reincarnation? It's something you're born with. But people like TLS, when they took me in, they taught me how to use it. So they helped develop it further? Exactly. Understood. Do you get paid for the work that you do with TLS? No. Okay, so how do you support yourself? Well, travel expenses of, let's say, a flight to London, for example, to do something. Yeah, everything will be paid. All the travel expenses are paid. I'm not getting a salary for my time. How do I support myself? As you know, I'm a businessman. I was a businessman before TLS. I'm well to do. I'm fine. I'm comfortable. And I don't need... I don't need a secondary income to live on. 
Got you. How many people in your day-to-day life, personally speaking, actually know who you are and what you really do? Other than TOS, which is a big group, very few. And when it comes to operations that you've been on, have you ever risked your life in an operation? Yes, it happens, yes. Okay, so you don't get paid for your work. You have to be undercover pretty much most of your life in terms of your day-to-day living. You're risking your life on operations. The next question would be, why are you doing it? It's a complicated question. Let me try to explain. When I was first approached, I wasn't approached by TLS. Hi, we're from TLS. Come join us. That's not the way it goes. Same way you met me, I met somebody else. It's a game of manipulation. Positive manipulation. For a good cause. I was... They got my curiosity going. The same way your curiosity was going. You didn't understand what TLS was in the beginning, right? Same thing here. I never heard about TLS. Once the curiosity kicks in, now you're asking questions, and you are begging for more information, and you want to get more information, and you... So, and and then you start seeing things that are, like, crazy, and you are obviously starting to ask questions, and you're looking for the magic trick here. Somebody is playing... is playing me. But the more you investigate, the more you see. It's real. It's crazy, but it's... it's real. So I forgot your question. Can you repeat your question? My question was, why, why do you do it? It's all inconvenient. You don't get paid. You have to be undercover. You have problems with the way that the organization does certain things. Why are you doing it? So again, once your curiosity kicks in, and you start learning more and more, and more is being revealed to you, you get more curious. And the thirst for knowledge takes over you. And you finally feel powerful, as you never felt powerful before, in a different way. It's not money that makes you powerful, because we live in a world where money makes you powerful. Suddenly, it was knowledge that made you powerful. It's like, I learned that I could do things that are much more than just a magic trick. And I liked it. It's a high that you could never understand, unless you experience it. And in the beginning, I wanted more and more. Today I'm more relaxed. I think about things differently. I'm the type of a person throughout my life. I was always looking to help somebody. Even when I didn't have the means. Today I have the means. It's much easier to help somebody. But I'm not talking only about financial help. I'm talking about being the right friend for someone. Supporting someone in need. Psychologically. Mentally. Emotionally. And it's just in me. It's part of me. Why am I doing it? I don't know. I just like doing it. Even before I was involved with TLS. People asking me why. Why are you doing this? And my answer was because I can. And because I should. And because it's the right thing to do. That's how I felt all my life. It's not something new. When TLS came into my life, and I suddenly was empowered, if you want to call it this way, to do those incredible things, I loved it. And I saw for the first time an organization that does undercover work, not for their own needs, but for the greater good. And they're helping a lot of people. They're involved in everything. Any subject you can think of in this universe, they're involved in. And although not always I understand what's going on, not always being told what's going on, but you can see the results. I could go on a job, do something. I don't even understand what I'm doing, okay? And I come home, I open the TV. I know what to look for and I see my mission on the TV. And my wife doesn't understand why I'm screaming, shut up, I need to hear this, you understand? And I'm into the TV and it happens a lot when I get my information through the TV because they're controlling things on the TV sometimes. You get your messages, you get your mission through the TV. You need to go where to tune into, and you get it. I don't get a phone call. You need to be in London tomorrow at 12 o'clock. It could be something on the screen that you're going to see. You think you're seeing CNN, but it's not. It's something that's fed into it. It's a very, very manipulative game. But again, 
for the greater good. Yes. Was I lied to in the beginning? Yes. Were you lied to in the beginning? Yes. Absolutely. Are you going to call me a liar because I lied to you? No. Because you know, I couldn't say certain things. Same thing happened to me. No, also, if you said certain things in the beginning, I would probably think you're crazy. If you, There was a way to disclose information. Right. So, slowly, slowly, information was coming in. I'm a person who checks the information because it seems to me like somebody was screwing with me. This thing didn't make sense to me, but the more I checked, the more I found out it's true. And today, it's my second family. Although I'm not initiated, it is my family. Are there any other organizations like TLS out there? And do they ever combine forces if there are? Yes and yes. Can we get names of anything? No way. You mentioned that one of the leaders of TLS is a rabbi. Now, at the same time, we also speak about a world where we're going to be one. But when you talk about a rabbi, it then sounds religious. At the same time, TLS has nothing to do with religion. Can you clear that up for anybody who doesn't understand what's going on here? Okay. Rabbi Eliezer Alfandi, that's his full name. Try to understand, in the beginning, I was not even allowed to write his name down. Even if I tried, and believe me, I tried, I couldn't write his name down physically. Meaning you couldn't move the pen. Physically, I couldn't. I write, nothing will come up. And I was, like, challenging the system. What do you mean I can't write it down? I was in my room, by myself, nobody sees. Let me write it down. I couldn't write it down. Today I have the permission to say his name in public, on video. That's incredible to me. He's a leader in the group, and he happens to be a Jewish rabbi. There are others. There are Muslims. There are Hindus. There are everything you want, you have in there. Males females, everybody is there. He just happens to be from the Jewish faith. He's a very old man today. He was approached when he was 50 years old. That's many, many, many years ago. 1640 is the date. Okay. You said it, not me, but yes. Born in 1590. Right. Okay. 1640 makes him 50 years old. And he went through the same process, like me, like you in a way. So I ask him about his experience because you're talking 300, 400 years ago. Things worked differently. He told me where he came from, where he was born. He told me about his life, his family a little bit, which he didn't like to talk too much about. And we became very good friends. He was my mentor. But there are other leaders who do the same thing that he does, but in a different capacity. His destiny, I guess, in this reincarnation is to be a Jewish rabbi. Next reincarnation, he could be, I don't know, something else. He could be a general in the U.S. Army. Religion has nothing to do with the group. You don't have to be affiliated with any religion. You don't have to practice religion. As a matter of fact, if you ask me personally, I'm anti-religion. Every religion. I think religion is one of the worst disasters that happen to humankind, but we're not going to talk about that now. Most of the people in TLS, I can tell you, think like me when it comes to religion. He happens to practice the Jewish religion, and there's a lot of information from the Jewish faith, which is the Bible and other books like the Zohar and the Talmud and the Gemara that he has major knowledge. He uses it for his own benefit. There's a lot of good information in every religion. I'm sure if you read the Quran or you read the New Testament, basically I'm sure it's all written by codes, and people like him can read the codes. He is very versed in the Quran. He is very versed with the New Testament. He knows everything about every religion. He speaks eight languages. Yeah, but when you look at him, you're going to see an old man. An old man in a good shape. But an old man. Extremely intelligent, extremely smart, and bright, full of knowledge. You could sit with him for a year and, and talk to him, and it's never-ending. I think right now is the right time to ask how God fits into this equation. A lot of people didn't understand, how does TLS view God? How do you view God? And so on. God. 
that's you really want to talk about God? Everybody really wants to talk about God. Okay, I'm going to give you my view on things, and you you translate it to anything you want. The way I view God is... Let's start with energy. Everything is energy. God, to me, represents oneness. We're supposed to be one. We are one, but we don't act like it. God is basically in me, in you, and everything in this world. I don't view God as an entity or somebody who sits up there judging us the way religions, all religions, are trying to portray. No. God is part of us. We are part of God. I'm sure you heard the word love before connected to God. But it's unselfish love. Unconditional love. The right word will be unselfish more than anything else. There are... If you're going to go into places, monasteries like you have in Tibet, which they practice till today, there are certain monasteries, some of them, or at least two of them, are TLS affiliated. Let's call it this way. You have monks who are there, who are living there. They usually, those monasteries are hidden in the mountains. They are carved into the mountain. A lot of them are destroyed by the Chinese army because, because they're trying to destroy anything to do with religion. Mm -hmm. But those monasteries are not religion. They don't view for them religion as love. Unconditional love. Unselfish love. And if you're going to go there, by the way, it would be great for you to visit if you can make it one day. Maybe you can take me. I think for a guy like you, you're going to love it there. You spend some time because you're always, I know you're always looking for teachers. I told you I'm not a teacher, but if you want a real teacher, this is the place where you have real spiritual teachers. That's a place you can learn to do out-of-body experiences for the right reasons. This is where you know how to connect yourself with your, with your teacher. Let's call him the master. Usually it's a master teacher. You learn how to connect to your loved ones. You can connect to your life partner, whoever it is. Okay. They are not celibate there. There are men and women there. And most of all, you learn how to connect to God, which is connecting within you, through you, to God, to the divine power. Now I can tell you, I can sit here for hours and tell you about love and unselfish love and unconditional love. You're never going to get it unless you are going to experience it. I happen to be one of the lucky ones to see it and experience it firsthand. But since you asked me before, where do I go if you don't want to teach me? Since you're bringing the subject up, Tibet, I know it's a hard place to get to. Very hard to find. You can't find it on Google, definitely not on Waze. But there are monasteries, some are left. Most of them are destroyed. But they're still operating under the radar. But they're operating, and a lot of young men and women go there, and it's a life-changing experience. Definitely. Is this a location that you can disclose to me at some point? No, not right now. I can tell you it exists. And it's not a secret that it exists. I'm sure that there's many books. People wrote about them. and But the Chinese army is trying to destroy Tibet. And they're doing a pretty good job of it for now. It's another sad thing. The world is standing by doing nothing. It could be stopped. It will take... It will take a big mission to accomplish something like this. But it should be done. People are being butchered. Murdered. And it's all in the name of killing a religion that really doesn't exist. The Tibetan people are not like the rest of the world, where they practice religion as we are, the Jews and the Christians and the Muslims. Their religion is love. This is what I talk to you about in the future. The time will come. Religions will be abolished, and there will be one religion. You can call it love. Unselfish love. Unconditional love. And it's going to be at that time where all the people are going to be connected to each other. 
And remember, I spoke to you before about one world government, and you were in shock. And I'm explaining again. I'm not against one world government, but the one world government I'm talking about is a government for the greater good to get the people in together, not to enslave them. Today, you're being a slave, but it's more than one entity who does it to you. They're trying to get to one entity. Let me finish. One second. What's going to happen? In this again, it's my opinion from the things I've seen around me. One world government will appear for the greater good. But once you're going to reach the level of universal awareness, you're not going to need a government. You're not going to need the police. You're not going to need an army because the people are going to govern themselves. Because once you know that you are one with your next door neighbor, or you are one with your competitor that you're doing business with, this competition is going to go away because you're not going to compete against yourself. You're not going to be trying to use greed to win because you understand by doing something negative, you're really hurting yourself. So all of those things are going to disappear. I keep mentioning Tibet because Tibet is the closest thing I can think of on this planet for you to see how people live and the way they treat each other. And I'm not going to tell you that Nirvana is there yet, but it's coming there. And it's going to start from places like that. The only other place where you can see this kind of operation is outside of this globe. And they live the life that I'm talking about now. I understand. Okay. So I was trying to explain to you, because I know this one world government freaks out a lot of people. But it's a good thing. It's a tool to reach the universal awareness. What you're trying to get is the universal awareness. I don't think you're going to get it with that one world government. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there's another way. But something tragic and revolutionary has to happen in this world for you to reach the point you want to reach. It's not going to happen by you talking to people. It's going to help. I'm not saying don't do it. But people need to wake up. This is part of your job, but it's not enough. You need to wake up 8 billion people. Some of them are not going to make it, so they're going to perish. Fine. But to get where I'm telling you, this nirvana, it is going to happen. Like I told you before, I think we have 170 years to go. I'm just hoping it's going to happen before. I think it will happen before. Maybe not in my lifetime, but in your lifetime. It's going to happen. And it's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. One world government for the right reasons is a good thing because people need to be awakened. You are only a small part of the formula. Maybe one day you will go to a different level, and do it in a different way. But remember, something tragic or revolutionary has to happen in order for people to wake up and to accept a one world government, which this government will bring it to a level of universal awareness, and then you won't need a government. Period. You don't need borders. You don't need an army. That's... For me, the nirvana we are talking about. I think the word government is what throws people off and where you brought it to of people self-governing once we get to that universal awareness, higher level of collective awareness is what people are more aiming towards. So I think it's also a terminology thing, partly because you also have a language barrier of where you come from and a difference in culture. So I'm bringing that up for anybody that doesn't understand you with the words that you use to clarify where you're coming from. So Thank you for sharing that. I want to bring us back to TLS for a second before we go into the darker topics with underground tunnels and children and whatever you're comfortable with covering on those topics. When it comes to TLS, and I'm going to challenge you on this one, you said many times that you don't always know why you're doing a mission. How are you so sure that you're doing it for the greater good? Because I see the results after and by the results, I can judge. Look, you're not doing anything bad to anybody or to anyone. That's not, that's not what they're about. It's a, it's a very spiritual group. I don't want to say naive, 
but some of them are even naive to a point that I was laughing about. And I was trying to say to myself, how can somebody so naive be in a group of TLS? It just doesn't make sense to me. It's an organization of spiritual awareness. Their main thing is spiritual awareness. The children out of the tunnels, it's a small part of the job. Missions with ETs to other planets or whatever. Again, it's being a part of NASA or the Pentagon or the U.S. government. When you say being a part of those organizations, NASA, the Pentagon and all that, are you talking about being a part of it or are you talking about being a part of it for infiltration purposes? Infiltration purposes, of course. I understand. Also, just to make sure that you understand, certain people from TLS who work in NASA and for NASA, they're getting paid a salary from NASA. NASA doesn't know what's going on, you understand? They don't know who they are. They don't understand that TLS has people in there. Same thing for the Pentagon. They are all over the place. So that means that we can say that in the Pentagon, in high-ranking positions in the government and all that, there may be people from TLS and maybe even other good organizations that are working to move certain things. Correct. Understood. Throughout our last interview, you, you expressed yourself in a way, very apparently, that you don't necessarily agree with the fact that TLS doesn't interfere with certain things. You don't agree with, you feel that they should be doing more according to what you said. So my question for you is, is, I mean, you've been on a lot of operations of what I would call interference, underground tunnels, taking out those tunnels, freeing certain children, interfering with the dark side as well, while they also do what they're doing with awareness. So how can you say they don't interfere with the fact that you've been on inter on missions that interfere. I never said the word interfere. I said, I said words like getting involved or do enough. I wouldn't use the terminology interfere. They do the work for certain purposes. All good. I'm not saying they're doing any bad things. But my personal feeling, my personal opinion, they're not doing enough. They could do more. They should do more, especially today. And you don't think that doing more to an extent, meaning they've done and released and freed hundreds of thousands of children. They've taken out certain tunnels, if you want to speak about that. They do, at the same time, military action and work with the military, from my understanding, while simultaneously doing the spiritual work and awareness. Where is the line of interference that is doing it for humanity instead of assisting humanity? Because there's a fine line between the two. Again, they are helping and assisting humanity. That's the purpose, in order to bring people to a universal awareness, which we spoke about before. All I said is they're doing great work. I'm very proud to be part of it, but they're not doing enough. I came with the plan, many plans, not one, of doing more for the greater good especially what's going on in the last two years in this world. Nobody wants to do anything. They're not telling me we don't do anything. They're saying we are rejecting the plan for now. They might be doing other things I'm not aware of. I don't know everything in there. Don't forget, I'm not initiated. I'm not a member. I'm affiliated with them. So it's possible. It's not possible. I'm sure they're doing things, but I just like to see things done more aggressive and faster. You've said specifically over this past year, I would say 2021, as in this past year, there have been a lot of operations or missions that they asked you to be a part of that you rejected due to the level of danger. Yes. I don't know what they're doing, but how do you know what they're doing and that they're not being aggressive enough if you're not agreeing to be there for your own safety concerns? Let me explain to you how it works, so you'll understand about the level of danger. From day one, not only now, from day one, anyone from TLS, not only me, that goes on a mission, they have to tell him the level of danger. That's rule number one. It's from one to ten. Ten meaning you're probably not coming back. The only difference between me and initiated members is that they don't have much of a choice of not volunteering. I have a choice of saying no, not for me, choose somebody else. Meaning when you're initiated, you're committing to saying okay. Right. Now, it's like 
they're being forced to say, okay, those people, they don't care. For them, it's like, I mean, you don't have to convince them. With me, I want to think about it. That's the difference between me and them. So, anytime I took a dangerous job, high level job, closer to 10, is only when I did it by myself. I didn't take any of my friends to do the job because I didn't want to be responsible if something goes wrong, so I did things on my own. When I go with someone, especially when I choose them for the job, because when it's my mission, I choose who I want to take according to energies, and so I like to keep it on a low level. Low level means three, four, five, six. Once I even use the seven with another person, I don't want to take my chances. Those people have families. They have children usually. Not always, but they do. I don't want it on my conscience because there's a chance that you're not coming back or you're coming back in a wheelchair. Things happened before. I was on jobs that I had to go to in the last minute. They told me to abort. We abort the mission. I left with my people. I got out. The next day, I hear five people died. They took my place. Somebody took my place and five people died the next day in the same place and I knew and I understood what's happening. Look, TOS is not an organization of fighters, although they fight when they have no choice. In the last two years, with everything that's happening with the tunnels and the earthquakes and the fake pandemic and all that, there were actually firefights. And TOS lost a lot of people. They lost a lot of people. I'm talking close to 2,000 people. Wow. Yeah. Throughout the world. Australia alone was over 700 people. There was actually a firefight. And when they had to fight, they fight. But yeah, maybe the other side had more losses, but still, 700 souls perished. This organization, like I told you before, 7,000 people. Now they are as of December 23rd of 2021, they reached already 8,300 to 8,400 members. Can you elaborate on the date December 23rd? It's the date of initiation for TLS throughout the world. So on December 23rd, many people were initiated, got into the group, and today the numbers are about 8,300 to 8,400 people. Before we speak about the tunnels, are there any other operations that you can sort of elaborate on to give a better understanding to the people watching on the types of real physical operations that TLS is doing in this world, has done or is doing today? Well, first of all, most operations are spiritual. They're not physical, okay? I don't know how to answer you unless you're going to be more specific. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. There are operations having to do with er earthquakes that were stopped. There are operations having to do, yes, with under underground tunnels and, and literally bringing, if you want to talk about it, explosions to take tunnels out to stop certain people from doing things. There are operations having, and I'm just talking about what I know. There's an operation that I've, I don't know about that I know the name of that I'm going to ask you, and I don't know if you could talk about it. I think it's called Project 852. I don't know what you can say, but... If my intuition serves me correctly, it has something to do with solar storms. I don't know if I'm right, but elaborate, talk to us, show us what these people are doing. I want to understand how, I want to understand how they're doing, what they're doing so that people can understand that yes, there are good forces doing certain things and this is how they're doing it, but we also have to take responsibility and do things ourselves as human beings. Well, since you mentioned Project 852, um, I can't tell you about it, but these are spiritual projects. This is not a physical project. Every spiritual project has 5% or 10% physical work into it, but the spiritual is mainly spiritual. Are you able to share the purpose or the goal of what that mission was no i can't talk about it it was a few years ago but i can't i can't give you information about that i can talk to you about general things 
You mentioned earthquakes. The earthquakes were connected through the tunnels. We'll get there before we go there. Yeah. Talk to me about other operations that you've been on, that you've done to give a wide understanding of the work physically and spiritually. And then we'll go deeper into, into the tunnels. Let's say there's a solar storm coming in. TOS has the ability to shift it or stop it. So this is one thing that we've done in the past. I was involved with one. Let's assume there's a major hurricane that comes in to an island. Let's say Puerto Rico, Bora Bora, that could be destroyed. TLS has the ability to stop it. Again, it's not being done by a machine. It's being done with people. Spiritual people who could shift things, and not always is TLS allowed to get involved or interfere, as you say, with the process. Otherwise, they will stop everything. However, most of the earthquakes, tsunamis, storms that you see, unfortunately most of them are not made by nature. This is man-made by the evildoers or psychopaths we spoke about before. We're not mentioning any names. They have the power to do the damage. TOS is trying to stop the damage. And as you know, and you published in your papers, there are certain technologies from way that, that those evil doers have in their possession. We're not going to get into it, how and whatever. Everything was written about and spoken about before, but it's a very, it's a very exciting technology. Strong. A lot of abilities. However, it could be used for the greater good, or it could be used by psychopaths in order to enslave humanity, in order to create chaos in order to take over geographical places in the world, and so on. Understood. Can you talk to us about the tunnels? I know throughout the year of 2020 specifically, you've been a part of a lot of operations. I don't know how many. In a certain operations, you risked your life. You almost died. There was an ambush in September of 2020. What can you share, number one, on a, on a big picture understanding for those who don't understand what these tunnels are, can you explain from your understanding what these tunnels are, why they exist, and what's being do done down there? Tunnels, first of all, were not built recently. They've been there for many, many years. All of the tunnels were built by the energy I spoke to you about. Meaning the technology, electromagnetic laser pulsation. Yes, and it was built by humans, not by ETs. Again, you always bring this up. ETs have nothing to do with it. It was built by humans. Psychopaths, as I call them. It's still being done today. The difference is that today, and years back also, TLS and people like TLS do their best to destroy it. Those tunnels are very extensive. They can go from New York to Portugal to Australia. They're all over. There are tunnels throughout, but there are also hubs. Hubs mean it's like a big city. By the way, they're all connected with trains that work on a magnetic field. How fast do these trains go? Fast. Real fast. You could do New York to Europe in 20 minutes. Have you been on these trains? Yes. Is there, a, just out of curiosity, is there any form of like a G-force? Do you have to drink anything to get on the train like you do on a spaceship? No, you don't have to drink anything. But we were wearing a special outfit, suit. Okay. And yeah, it's going pretty fast. There are like hubs, centers like South Africa has one. Australia has one. Certain places in Europe, which I don't want to mention where, but in Europe you have one. One of the biggest ones, believe it or not, is in Antarctica. You could travel by train. If you have the ability, you could travel by levitation. They guard it with technology. It's not like people are sitting there with guns and watching you. Are there any guards on any entrances? Very few. Where are these entrances? Can't tell you. Around cities, area? All over. They never end. You go in and... How many times have you been in these tunnels? And why? Not too many. About ten times. For what purpose? It's not my thing. The 2020 operations got me involved in the New York area, and many kids were taken out. Many, many kids. Not only in New York, all over. But again, 
It's another example. Why did they stop? There's more kids out there. It's one of the more difficult missions I had to take because the things you see there, it stays in your memory forever and you feel disgusted. You see things one should not see. A lot of the kids were taken out. I don't know if you can call them kids anymore. They're more like subhumans. It's like you see, I don't want to say monsters, but they look deformed. Some looked okay, but all of them, you could see they are not. They're not well. You, you see sick children. Were the majority brought there? Were they born there? Is there cloning down there? Well, in the old days, they used to kidnap kids and just take them. Today, they still use kidnapping, but not as much as they used to. Today, it's more of cloning. You can take a child and clone them over and over again, and you dispose of the body whenever you're done with it. Most of the kids who were taken out, they're not, they're not making it. They cannot. They don't know how to live outside of the tunnels. Most of them, they're in such a bad shape, they perish anyway. What kind of things, and I know this is a difficult topic, what kind of things have you seen done by these evildoers to these children, if you want to call them that? I personally did not see anything. What I saw is when we went to take them out, and we, it's like, it's all booby-trapped. You gotta go with special shoes, special equipment. My job was more to find, I have the ability to find booby traps, let's call them. But still, people still made a mistake and people died. Are those traps through a certain form of technology? Yes. Can you elaborate on what that means exactly? Again, they use very specific technologies. For example, if you go in the tunnel, the tunnels are usually very wide. How wide is very wide? It all depends. If it's a hub, it's like a whole city. Otherwise, it could be 50 to 100 meters wide. It's wide. Enough for a train to go by, for you to walk around it. And let's say one of our people did not listen to the orders and he was touching the wall before this wall was checked, and you could perish. But it's not like an explosion. You just disintegrate to nothing. There's no body left by the time we're done with you. Is it some form of, like, laser technology? Yeah, it's some form of laser combination with magnetic field. And by the time they're done with you, there's no body. How are you able to detect what's, what's where in terms of the traps? I can't reveal that, but I have the ability to, to know where is the danger zone. Do you have specific tools that you use? Is it a spiritual thing? Is it connected to physical and spiritual? It's a spiritual tool that I don't want to talk about now. I understand. Again, you could find booby traps. You could find lasers, laser guns. You could find nukes. It's a spiritual thing that I, I can't talk about. I know we've already touched up on this topic a little bit in the first interview you and I have done together. But I want to ask it again in regards to the tunnels. A lot of people believe that these tunnels are operated by evil extraterrestrial beings or that there are extraterrestrials down there doing dark and evil things. From your experience, what have you seen? Can you validate that that's true, that that's not true? Okay, all the tunnels are being unfortunately controlled and operated by those evil doer psychopaths. However, in some places, you're going to go in and you're going to see government agencies in this place. They are part of them. So I was trying to tell you when you have a government, and again, I'm not going to mention names, but you understand it's not your government. Your president is not your president. Somebody's running the show here. And yeah, they can use a certain army from a certain country to control the place. Those soldiers who are there, they don't know what's going on. And they might protect a tunnel under the name of the so-called army. But it's not an army. It's the same people running the show. Now, throughout the world, it's the same people, same army. They're just giving different names to governments. So over here, by the way, I believe they call them deep underground military bases. They call them dumbs for short. Yes, but they're not. For example, in the U.S., are there U.S. soldiers in those tunnels? Yes. Do they know what's going on? No. So again, 
back to the whole extraterrestrial thing that's going down there. What can you touch up on that? People are under the impression from very, I would say, like significant sources of truth telling that there are evil extraterrestrial beings that are down there doing dark things. First of all, there's no such thing as evil ETs. Get it out of your head. I know there's a lot of things and the internet and TV and shows doesn't exist. They're affiliated with people like TLS, and they're doing some work. Yes. For example, one of the missions I was in, you remember I told you about Kevin. Kevin is an ET. Well, last interview, you never said his name. So... No, okay. Now I can say his name. Today, his name is Kevin. Explain who Kevin is for anybody who doesn't understand. Kevin is... Kevin is a former ET. He's still an ET, but today his name is Kevin. His name was changed, obviously. He goes by the name Kevin. He lives here in New York. He's part of TLS, and... He was part of the missions last year. Not last year, in 2020, when missions were done. Understood. So there could be extraterrestrial activity down there, but from your experience, it's been done for positive purposes on the side of TLS. Yeah. Only the side of TLS or other organizations. I'm not saying TLS is the only one. But there are other organizations doing similar things. But again, you always get stuck on the children. The children is not the main purpose of those tunnels. It's a small part of it. Always follow the money. There's a lot of the money involved in there. Gold. Silver. And I'm going to tell you something that was never said before. Antarctica is a major hub. If you try to fly today over certain parts of Antarctica, you can't. Ask yourself why. What's the big secret? The hub is the secret. Why is there no fly zone in Antarctica? For what purpose? If there's no people, no population, what's the big secret? That's the hub. It's one of the biggest hubs. Fort Knox. I guarantee you, if you're going to go to Fort Knox today, you open the door and you check for the gold. There's no gold there. They make you believe the gold is there. The gold is not there. It's been hidden in places like tunnels, especially Antarctica. Nobody can get to it. But it's not only gold. You have platinum. You have a lot of important minerals such as gold, that are being hidden by, you call it governments. I'm calling it the psychopaths, under the same name, under the disguise of the government. You understand? So it could be the Russian government, it could be the American government. It's all BS. This is just a disguise. But again, it's not only children. If you're going to go to Antarctica, you're not going to find any child. There's no children there. Zero. They use them in other places of the world, like South Africa. It's a main hub for children, let's say. Australia was. Not anymore. Europe is still going on. The US, unfortunately, is still going on. It's less today after the big operation of 2020. But if you ask me if they complete the mission, no. Now those earthquakes we were talking about, those weird earthquakes, you remember? I want to share an experience about the earthquakes for the viewers so they understand certain things. Back in, and I actually wrote down the dates so I, I have all the details that I remember. Back in August of 2019, you came right here and you told me about a certain thing that was about to happen in terms of earthquakes around the world. And sometime at the end of August of 2019, beginning of September, it started. But pretty much what you said was you're going to see a lot of earthquakes happening at exactly 10 kilometers over the next few days. And what that is, is TLS executing certain operations 
of, for lack of a better term, blowing up certain tunnels, exploding certain tunnels to stop them from doing what they're doing in terms of the side of the, the psychopaths, the evildoers, whatever you want to call them. Literally a few days after you told me that, I believe it was about four days later, there was a period of another four days where 20, and I did, I looked at all the graphs and I, I looked at all the math of what was going on in terms of reporting. 25% of every earthquake that happened around the world happened at exactly 10 kilometer depth. And then right after that, the USGS website came out with this, uh, uh, I would call it an excuse, right? It was right after that. They came by saying, oh, if you see anything at 10 kilometers, that's just the standard that we're going to give because if we can't exactly measure it, then we're going to tell you 10 kilometers. But there were 9.9, there were 10.1s, but 25% of the earthquakes happened at exactly 10 kilometers. So I want to say this for the record on camera. Was that a part of the operation having to do with TLS blowing up these tunnels? First of all, just to refresh your memory, I didn't talk to you just about earthquakes at 10 kilometers. I spoke to you about fires in Australia. I spoke to you about a pandemic that's coming in, a fake pandemic. I spoke to you about closure in New York City going to be shut down. You told me it's impossible. You know, you looked at me like I'm nuts. I told you the entire world could be on lockdowns. Things are going to happen in Israel, in the US. It's going to happen all over. Everything I spoke to you about, and I just came to give you like a friendly warning. And get ready for your business or whatever it is. Things are about to happen. So it wasn't only the earthquake. Correct. The earthquakes happened and are still happening. Why 10 kilometers? This is what you're asking me? Because most of the tunnels are at this level. Most of the tunnels. How come? I don't know. A lot of them are at 10, but you can see explosions at 5. If you remember at that time, it wasn't only 10. There was a big number at 10, but there was 5 kilometers. There was 3 kilometers. There was a lot of numbers out there. I told you 10 kilometers would be the most. And it did happen. So why 10 kilometers? I can't answer you, except to say that most of them are there, but they could be at 70 miles too. So today in 2021, 2022, are they still doing these operations? Are they still blowing up these tunnels to stop these psychopaths from doing what they're doing? Yes, they still do it. Again, to my opinion, not enough, but they do. What would you like to see them do more of? I think the tunnels have to be demolished completely, including the technology in there, and in order to hurt those psychopaths, really. You hurt them in their pocketbook, and you grab what you can regarding gold and money and platinum, whatever is in there, and they have the capability of doing it. They've done this before and was taken out, including when I was there. It's not only the children, but it's not enough. Meaning they've confiscated certain, like, you talk about gold, diamonds, things like that. Yes. I have a few more questions when it comes to the children. Although you're saying that they're a small part in the big picture, they are a very sensitive part to what's going on in terms of humanity as a whole. Meaning that does touch a lot of people to understand that these things are going on. And a lot of people are making changes primarily because of that. Because that's it's a, it's a very sensitive topic when you speak about that. So, number one few more questions about children, and then I want to move to Antarctica with you to ask a few questions about that. But there have been a lot of talks about this thing called adrenochrome. Do you know anything about that? Is it true? What do you know about it that you can share? Well, they extract it from the children, and that's the reason they're using the children for their own benefit. But it's not only that. They're taking other hormones they're taking certain enzymes 
selected certain blood cells from those children to be used for, first of all, they use them as guinea pigs for testing. And, to my opinion, it's worse than what Mangle did in Auschwitz to the children. There's a lot of testing and a lot of personal use for the elite. There are big labs under the ground that it's being done. Also, there are huge safes to hide whatever they want to hide in there. Money. And they put children in rooms that are extremely guarded with their technology and with people. There are very few people in the tunnels. There aren't too many except for the hubs. In the hubs, there are a lot of soldiers. Usually you see there, there's more security. But there are many children down there. Yes. Can you... But they're not in the main rooms. They're in the hidden rooms within the walls of the tunnels. Do you have an idea of the number of children that we're talking about? It's huge. It's numbers you can't comprehend. I have to guess how many are left today after so many were taken out. Close to a million. Would you say over a million were taken out? Yes. Where were they taken? Can't tell you. Are you able to disclose if wherever they ta they're taken is on Earth or not? I can tell you that they are being taken depending on the child, on the situation, on the condition. Some of them are being taken elsewhere, outside of the globe, yes. Not on planet Earth? Correct. On crafts? Yes. So is it safe to say that ETs are helping in this regard? Yes, of course. How do they view the situation? I'm talking about the extraterrestrials now. How do they view things like this happening on Earth, coming from a place where this does not happen whatsoever? That's their purpose. It's to eliminate all of this madness and to bring awareness into the world. And once you have universal awareness, going back to that word again, that's how you're going to connect with those ETs, because they're part of you as well. You just don't get it. People see them as the enemy, and they're not. So it's in their benefit to get to universal awareness also on this planet in order to connect with others and get... Try to understand, we're, we're talking about an infinite universe. There's no beginning. There's no end. But you'd be able to connect with every entity out there, same as your body, made out of trillions of cells. But they are all connected together. They all communicate with each other. The same thing is going to happen in this universe. It's a process that's going to happen, but it's going to take some time and understanding on the part of the people. It's just very hard to comprehend. I'm in it, and I'm still having a hard time dealing with it. It's, it's weird. It's like, unbelievable. But it is there. It's going to happen. Why am I so sure it's going to happen? Because of my teaching through my rabbi and all that. I'm not making predictions here. I told you I'm not. I'm not a prophet who makes predictions. I'm just telling you what I know from my teachings, and I trust my information 101%. One last question about the operation itself when it comes to the children. How do you explain hundreds of thousands, if not millions, are being taken out and sent elsewhere without anybody seeing? Let me try to explain. Let's take New York. How do you think 100,000 children, not 100,000, let's say a given night, we'll speak about a specific night, you're talking about 20,000 children. How do you take 20,000 children in the middle of New York City without anybody seeing? Don't forget, you are under the cover of Corona. Closures. Nobody is out. If anybody was out, if you come with the cover of the police or the army and you tell people to get out, Nobody wants to mess with you. They are being put into buses. They are given certain clothes. Some of them were taken out in boxes. You can call them crates. You can call them caskets of dead people. Although they were not. They were live children in there. You're just moving boxes into trucks from there. They're being shipped into a port where a ship is waiting, and they're being taken care of there. They need medical help right away. Some of them were so bad they were taken to a New York hospital. But again, it was done in a way that is a very secretive mission. Not too many children were taken to hospitals there.
They were taken to hospitals elsewhere. Some were taken to New Jersey hospitals in the beginning, and from there, they were shipped to other places. But everything is planned in advance. You have a bunch of buses. It was done at night, not during the day. You can't take them out during the day because you're going to be blinded. Although the only sunlight they see is artificial sun down there. You bring them out during the day, they'll be dead in 10 minutes. So it all has to be done undercover at night. Wow. And still, kids don't make it. They don't make it from the shock of being in like the atmosphere, you're saying? Look, most of them are very sick to begin with. They're very weak. They're very frail. So they didn't have much time left anyway. But you taking them out, first of all, they get scared because they don't know who you are. They, they think you are the enemy. They never saw anybody except whoever they saw. Suddenly they see new people with these crazy outfits on coming in. They saw things that looked like guns. It wasn't regular guns. It was more of a laser technology. So they are scared. They hear noises they never heard before. They never saw a bus. And as much as you try to be nice to them and calm them down, they're still children. They cry. Most of them are numb. They don't know how to cry. Mm. But you see the shock in their faces. It's sad. It's a very, very sad situation. But yeah, it was being done. Again, don't forget they have the technology of bringing a facade in front of anything they want. So tomorrow, let's assume I want to hide the Empire State Building. You could create... You remember the fumes we were talking about? You create a screen, mm. and you are not going to see the Empire State Building. It's much easier when you do it through the night. When it's dark, it's easier to do it. So, it is an operation, a big operation, and you have the technology to hide buildings, to hide children, to hide the buses, to hide the ships. You could do it. But for this, you need the technology. You need the people like the rabbi who has the power to do it. Like him, there are others who are... It was a world organization of a mission that was done at the same time. Right now, there are millions of people that are really waking up to these the fact about these tunnels, the children, certain things going on down there. Yet, there is no, call it like concrete proof, whatever that even means. Do you believe that the fact that people are starting to accept this reality as a truth is the reason why it's coming out more and more. Concrete proof of what? I don't understand what you're asking. I mean, we could talk about tunnels all we want. The non-believers will say, where's the proof? Well, let me put it this way. The non-believers, who are most of the population, don't forget, this video is being watched by your viewers. You don't have to convince them. They're already in the process. You don't have to convince them. Most of them believe and know it exists. But if you're going to put yourself on Fox News or CNN tomorrow, first of all, it will never happen. But if it will, you'll be the laughing stock of the world because the same people who don't believe the tunnels is the same people who will come and tell you you're a sham. Take the video you're doing now. How do they know that you're not interviewing yourself, giving the answers yourself, changing your voice and saying, that this guy, Ray, whoever is saying whatever he wants to say, I can say it's a sham about anything. You understand? How do your viewers know that this interview is real? How do they know that this is not you sitting in my chair? Or an actor. Or an actor. Okay, but let's assume you want to keep it a secret and you are a psychopath like everybody else. And you want to make this up and you are interviewing yourself. You are actually editing the video so you can put whatever you want in there. So you ask the questions, and then you move to another chair, and you give the answers, and you play with the cameras, and it's a Photoshop. So you could do a Photoshop with Jason Cherka. You could do a Photoshop about the tunnels. A lot of the pictures I saw on the internet myself are not real. They are fake news. People make stuff up. The real pictures, I don't think you can get them. Nobody's publishing them. Try to understand, for example, when I go into the tunnels, I can't take my phone. They're not telling me, oh no, we don't trust you to take the picture. I can't take nobody, no watch, no phone, nothing. Only what they give you. Why? 
I don't think TLS is worried about me taking the picture and publishing it tomorrow on the internet, but nobody's taking pictures. To take pictures out will be very difficult, and if you're going to do it, the psychopaths will eliminate you. So some pictures I saw that are real, and I was surprised to see them. Most of them are fake. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And photoshopped a tunnel and put it on the internet. Same thing you could say about September 11th, you understand? Unfortunately, it's possible to do it today. The technology is there. So how do I know this interview is real? I don't know. How do you know anything is real? Exactly. So it's like I said, you have a specific clientele, I call it. Viewers that watch you, they like you, they trust you, they believe in you. So that's not an issue. You don't have to convince them. And now, let me give you an advice. Don't try to convince anybody of anything, because the non-believers will be... Even if you're going to bring the Messiah down here to give them... They're going to say it's a magic trick. Don't try to convince. It's not going to help. Bring awareness. Talk about as much as you can. Help in any way you can. And I'm saying the same thing for your viewers. If you really want to help, come out. Come out to the streets. You believe in something. You think evil is being done. Go out and demonstrate. Go out and speak. Don't only go out and vote, which most people don't do, because your vote, if you ask me, doesn't count. Not in today's atmosphere, okay? Voting is not enough. Voting, to my opinion, means nothing today. But you have to unite. You have to go out to the streets. You have to demonstrate and bring awareness in. I'm not saying demonstrate in a violent way. Absolutely not. But speak. Bring your voice out. You should connect with other people such as yourself. And do more of a group thing. Do more rallies. That's how you bring awareness to the people. At the same time, hopefully organizations like TLS will do their thing. I know we're going to get there. I'm not happy about what's going on today. I'm even frustrated because I feel I could do something and nobody wants to do anything. But I have to respect what they said because there are things I don't know. What I don't know, I don't know. However, if you ask me, the future will be brighter. It's just a matter of time. I think we're getting there. It's a little bit slow to my taste, but we are getting there. All I'm asking for people such as yourself and your viewers, go out and speak. Go out, share the videos, share the information, demonstrate, regroup, reunite. Don't let people separate you. Okay, what those governments or those psychopaths are doing is separating you by feeding you wrong information, by feeding you phony diseases that don't exist, by poisoning you on purpose, by making you sick on purpose, by giving you false medicine, which is our poisons, by putting phony politicians who supposedly care for you. Nobody cares for you. Don't ever trust the politicians. Don't ever trust them. Understood. Okay. Can we go into Antarctica? Okay. Have you been to Antarctica? Yes. For what purpose? Well, I was at the North Pole. I was at the South Pole. Have you been in the areas that people cannot go to? Yeah, of course. You're not allowed to be on the very North Pole or South Pole. You can't get... You can't get in there. According to your government. So yeah, I was there. What is the mission? Most of the work there is under the ground. There's nothing above ground except ice and very cold and... Be more specific. What is it you want to know about the North and South Pole? There are individuals who speak about this idea of inner Earth, hollow Earth, entrances at the North and the South Pole. There are very well-respected individuals like Admiral Richard Byrd in 1954, who's famous for flying over one of the poles and saying, well, wait a second, suddenly I found myself in this lush green landscape when a second ago I was in ice, you know, so... There are some people where, because of the no-fly zones and because of the secrecy, they say, no, the earth is flat. That's why they don't want you to go there. They don't want to see you. They don't want you to see what's beyond the poles. There are other individuals who say, no, there are bases down there. There are underground tunnels. And then there are other individuals who say that there's 
an earth that's actually hollow and it's not magma and lava in the center, but there are actually entrances from the poles. What can you share about that from your experience? What can I share? Well, there are entrances. I've been there. I went through them. I don't know about green. I never saw green anywhere, but once you go in, it's more of a tunnel than an entrance. We refer to it as the black hole. I know you refer to a black hole as something in space, but for us in TLS, this is the black hole. Admiral Richard Byrd refers to it as the great unknown. Well, TLS refers to it as a black hole. One in the north, one in the south. When you go in, it's really dark. It's really black. Eventually you get some light. We had to bring light with us to go in. First time I was in, I was at the North Pole. I don't want to disclose too much information. I personally came with two other people. I came unprepared. I... it wasn't part... It wasn't part of the mission my first time. It was more of my curiosity. Were you allowed to be there? At that moment? No. I did it without permission. I manipulated my way in. I got hurt. Not too badly, but I got hurt. I trusted the two people who came with me to protect me because I knew they knew what they were doing. And, uh... And I manipulated my way in. There was an entrance on both sides. You could travel from one side to another, but it's not... It's not by craft. You could travel by levitation. You could walk. There is water there. There is life there, but not humans. There's life of, I would call it, insects. I didn't see any humans there except down the South Pole, where you actually have bases and you have people there, normal people. There are people who believe that there are advanced civilizations within the Earth that are settling their extraterrestrial civilizations. Not saying that they're bad or good or anything from what people believe, but people do believe that there are advanced civilizations down there. Do you know anything about that? I can tell you through my teachings, again, no, there is no life in there in that form. There are insects there. There's water there. And then there's the core. The core is a very hot place. The core is a center of energy of the globe. Can you get from one side to another? Yes, you could. But there's no life there, such as people living there. There's no such a thing. At the South Pole, there is. But these are bases that were built by humans, and there are soldiers there. Scientists. Doctors. But no, not what you're talking about. There's a lot of talks about extraterrestrial life being connected to Antarctica, certain uh, technological developments with anti-gravitational crafts. I know the Nazis and Hitler were famous for having a base back in World War II in Antarctica. Do you know of any connection between extraterrestrial life and Antarctica? And I ask that because there are many intelligent and well-respected pilots that flew over um, no-fly zones that saw crafts and formations that looked like what we would call a flying saucer moving in ways that doesn't make any sense. So, as I told you before, the real Fort Knox is over there. That's the reason for the security and the army and the base. They are protecting this area. The so-called American government, if you want to call it American government, and the Russian government are involved Regarding the ETs, they're all over. So of course, they've been to Antarctica. Are they part of this operation? No. But they come and go as they wish. One of the things I can tell you ETs are concerned about regarding this planet is the nuclear power. And it can destroy the globe. And the laser technology we talked about before, that can destroy the world if you use it in a negative way. As I told you before, you could take a continent, or a country like the USA, or Antarctica, and demolish it within less than an hour, by sending a certain sonic boom, which we spoke about before. There are reports, I'm sure you can read about it on the internet, 
the ETs came to certain American bases and shut the nuclear power down completely for a period of half an hour, an hour. I even saw a testimony from one of the admirals at the time. I can tell you that a lot of nukes were dismantled by the ETs. Yeah, they do things like this. Of course, your government is not going to tell you about it, but they were dismantled. Why nuclear weapons specifically? Because they understand the damage that could be done. Humans can bring... Imagine a nuke onto the moon, for example, and they start testing it over there. Imagine bringing it to another planet by humans who just want to test it. People want to test. They screw around with the weather, why not screw around with the moon? They have the ability to do it. That's a problem. This will affect other planets. It will affect other life. As I said, we're all connected. ETs are not your enemy. They are a part of you. They understand it. We don't. That's the reason we perceive them as a threat. They're not a threat. They're here to help. The day will come where we will be one nation. Speaking about extraterrestrial life, again, I, I want to emphasize a certain point and speak about it multiple times because it's it's of major confusion for, I would say, the majority of the viewers watching this interview. There are a lot of people, David Icke, a lot of people that, that I would say are, are great in terms of what they do. Maybe they're not right about everything that they speak about, but they're trusted they have results, they've predicted certain things from way back when, and they all insist that there is evil extraterrestrial life. They call them the reptilians. Now, I'm going to challenge you. Last interview, you said you've been in contact with about five or six extraterrestrial races, different races. How can you be so sure to say that in the entire universe, there's no such thing as a reptilian or an evil extraterrestrial. Where does that come from that you're so insistent? Okay, first of all, I happen to know David Icke. I think he is a great man who does a great job. The only lizard, and I know what they're talking about, it does exist, but it exists here. They're not coming on a spaceship from a different planet to destroy Earth. They are here. They might want to destroy Earth, but they're here. They're coming from here. Are they of a different race? They are a different type of entity. The fact that they can shapeshift into a lizard. They're not you. You understand? They're not you. They're different from you. Do you want to call it a different race? Yeah, because if I'm white and you're black, we are different races, but we're still human. But if I'm white and you're white and you can shapeshift into a lizard, and you're a psychopath about it, yeah, for me, yeah, okay, so you can call it a different race. It's how you want to use the terminology for the specific subject. So what you're saying is on a technicality, they're human beings, but we may refer to them as something else because they have other abilities that most human beings may not have. Correct. Now again, if you've only seen a select few and been in contact with a select few races, how can you be so sure to say that there aren't races from other planets coming here to destroy? Because, as I told you before, through my teachings, and I trust my information, and I trust my teachers, when they tell me something, I take it to the bank. I can't tell you that I've been to every planet, and I've seen, and no, absolutely not. I have very, very limited experience with it. What I'm telling you is through my teachings, and I trust my teachers. I'll give you an example. If you want to go to the Bible for a second, in the Bible it says that every fish that has scales must have fins. But there could be a fish that has fins and no scales. The Bible was written 3,000 years ago, and it says that all over the world, wherever you're going to go, if it has scales, it has fins. But if it has fins, it doesn't need to have scales. And believe me, every scientist in the world, everybody tried to improve this theory. Nobody could find the fish. So how did this person, or divine power, or God, whatever you want to call it, when he wrote the Bible 3,000 years ago, how could he have made a claim like this? He's been to every ocean in the world. He's been to every place in the world. 
that means that there was a knowledge that came in, and you trust this knowledge. But how can they make a claim 3,000 years ago? How did the Jews know then that there could not be a fish with scales without fins? Same thing I'm telling you. I don't have to be all over the world. I got the information. I trust the information. And I stand by it because everything that I was told, everything that I've seen that I went to check later, came out to be true. I was a big skeptic in the beginning, like everybody else, especially me, and I was proven wrong every time. So I learned to back off, take the information, and move with it. According to what you shared, specifically in our first interview together, you, you made sure to emphasize that extraterrestrials that do come here from other planets, their planets are what we would call like a, a utopian society. They live in a, a great place of harmony, love, unity. Why would they bother coming all the way here from there to a place, a planet like Earth with, with war and poverty and starvation and greed and corruption and, and everything we're experiencing today? Well, the simple answer is universal awareness. The second answer, which I'll tell you about soon, is the, not the Bible, but the Bibles. And I'll explain in a second. Let's talk about universal awareness. Once you get to universal awareness, a true one with unconditional love, unselfish love, they understand that we are all connected. That means if you are hurting here on Earth, it is affecting them. So it's in their benefit to come in and try to fix things if they can. How do you fix things? Through universal awareness to love, and selfish love, and so forth. As we spoke about before. And this is part of their work. There are very, very spiritual entities. In a way, I don't think you as a regular human comprehend until you actually meet with them. Speak to them. Study them. Learn from them. Only then you can understand the level of spirituality. It's something that a normal person cannot get. Unless he's going to get there. And the only way to get there is through unification. Universal awareness. I keep saying that word again, but that's the word for everything. Another thing that they are lacking, that they don't have out there, they have their own issues, like I told you. Sia has a water problem. They have their issues. Everybody has an issue. That's part of life, I guess, for all of us. None of them. And again, I understood by being there, and by studying them up close, and by learning from my mentor. In one of the visits, if you remember, I told you it was like some type of a funeral. And to me, it seemed as if they were praying. But they were not praying. They crave to get the Bibles, but I'm, I'm, I'm not saying Bible, I'm saying Bibles in plural. Why Bibles? In our world here on this planet, we were given the Bible, or Bibles, meaning the Bible as we know it, the New Testament, the Quran, the Hindus, have... Everybody has their own thing. But if you pay attention, all of them are stemming from the same idea of God. Oneness. They're all pitching the same thing. They just have different, different leaders. And again, it was done in order to separate the masses, separate the population. My God is better than your God, and so forth. That's why we're here in this mess. But those Bibles have codes. Those Bibles have a lot of good knowledge. Positive knowledge. And secret knowledge. They are craving for those Bibles. There are religions that stemmed from the days of Atlantis that doesn't exist today. Again, very spiritual continent at the time. Very spiritual people, and they were destroyed due to technology. They were so advanced that they became so impure and got away from spirituality so much that they were destroyed. They destroyed themselves. Meaning their technology surpassed their level of spirituality. Exactly. And technology, as good as it is, makes you become less spiritual if you don't know how to control it. That's what's happening here, by the way, today. We are going in the footsteps of Atlantis. They don't want that. They're looking for unification, to be united, and to get a hold of those 
of this knowledge. The question was, what's the big deal? They are ETs. They can grab the Bible and sit and learn it. It cannot be done this way. It has to be done by reunification through a self-awareness, through this love that I'm talking about. It will have to be a new religion. It's not new. It's old that will become new again. This is the nirvana I keep talking to you about. The days of the Messiah, if you want to call it. The Jews will call it the Messiah. The Christians will call it the Messiah. I'm calling it nirvana. It's all the same thing. So again, back to your question. Why do they bother with us? Again, one, because they're part of us. Number two, you could say they have everything except the knowledge, the energy, and the codes of the Bibles. Mm. By the way, part of what I'm telling you is now in the Book of Rays of Light, the part that you did not read and I refuse to publish for now, for my own reasons, and at certain points it talks about it. That's part of the teaching that I was given, and it's in writing, basically. So the extraterrestrials don't necessarily want our religion, but they want the foundation of, of let's say, the codes and the Bibles and plural that we have here on Earth. As I said, the Bible, like many other books, has codes in it. The Bible, as much as I have a lot of problems with the Bible, as it's written. There are a lot of codes and perfect information that could be used for the greater good. This is what they're looking to get. Mm. Why they cannot grab it and get it on their own, I don't know. I have no explanation for something like that. But this is the two main reasons I told you. That's the reason why they're here. But again, if you are part of somebody, you have to help fix whatever disease they have. And we are a very diseased society. You've mentioned many times that Earth holds a higher form of, call it like, godly light that they're attracted to. Is this connected to what you're saying right now? Through the Bibles, yes. What about physical Earth, geographical locations? Oh, there are energy. Every planet has an energy core, energy centers. On our globe, we have more than one. The main one is in Jerusalem, in Israel. That's the main one. There's only, if I'm not mistaken, 36 throughout the world. Major points. Major points of energy. The Holy of the Holiest is in Jerusalem. But there's another one in the Dead Sea, underneath the sea. And there's one in Haifa, Israel, as well. Hmm. Why Haifa? I have no clue. But I've been to those places, and as I said, the Holy of the Holiest, and the most important one on the globe, it's Jerusalem. I guess that's why everybody is fighting over it for hundreds of years. They don't even understand why they're fighting, what they're fighting for. When you say Jerusalem, are you speaking about the Dome of the Rock? Yes. Can you elaborate on the spiritual and physical significance of the Dome of the Rock as a location here on Earth? Number one, it's the center of the core of energy. You can call it the center of the world if you want, since we are a globe, so it is the center. If you're looking for the center, this is your center. Underneath the dome, as I told you before, and you spoke about it, there are certain artifacts, I don't know what to call it, which have significant energetic powers that were hidden there on purpose since the destruction of the second temple. I mean the Jewish temple. What they call the Beit HaMikdash. The big secret, the big effect, is underneath the whole thing. And the day will come, I hope, that somebody will go in and those secret energies the secret weapons I told you about and all that from the time of the pyramids are hidden over there, and the day will come it will be taken out. Some of this information and artifacts, I don't know what to call them, were taken out. Some of them are hidden underneath, underneath the temple. Some of them are taken to the other side of the world, the Yucatan Peninsula, and some of them are hidden over there, but in underneath the seabed, and they're therefore which creates another energy point, by the way, and they are, they are there for many, many years now, and they're going to be there for a while until the somebody will eventually connect between the Jerusalem energy point and the Yucatan Peninsula, which is in South America, and they'll bring these powers together. I know that there's set to be, I don't know if you can talk about it, but a very, call it a world revolutionizing event having to do with the Dome of the Rock at some point in the future, could be 10 years, 30 years, or 50 years, I have no idea. 
what can you disclose in regards to that event and what we might be able to see in the near or distant future having to do with that geographical location? Well, let's hope it's going to be in the near future. I really want to hope so. It's what I told you before about the reunification between Jerusalem and the Yucatan Peninsula, and at the same time, uniting the world to make it as one. Again, no governments, no police, no borders, no army. It will be self-governed by the people without a leader. Everybody will be a leader. Everybody will be the same. Economy will not exist as we understand it today. Money will not exist as we know it today. It will be much more simplified, transparent. That's the revolution you're talking about. But unfortunately, to get to this point, I think we're going to have to go through some tragic event in the world, especially in Jerusalem or Israel, with the revolution from the people and for the people. And as I said before, your viewers, anybody, you have to come out, bring the awareness in. Everybody has their part. You cannot do this job by yourself. You can do a little bit. Your viewers can do a little bit. Everybody can do some. Everybody does their part. But we will get to this point by uniting, by going out, demonstrating, speaking, screaming. Again, I'm saying no violence. There's no need for violence. A lot of spiritual work. A person such as yourself, if you can get to Tibet somehow and go explore, I think you'll find very interesting things. Yes. Why are you smiling? Why am I smiling? Because you'll find, you'll find out what I'm talking about when you get there. So you're telling me that I have to go there? Have to? No. Should? Yes. <laughs> you don't have to do anything. Okay. Um, are you able to disclose any information about the event that I'm talking about? We both know what I'm talking about. Are you able to disclose? Maybe you can't disclose who. I understand that. But what may happen a timeline of your prediction based on what you're seeing. No, no, I, I don't want to talk about this. Except what was written already and you published. I don't, I don't, I don't want to go there. No. Okay. You mentioned, and I already brought this up earlier in the interview, about you being given certain missions that were more dangerous than the rest that you didn't want to necessarily do over the past 12 months in regards to TLS for your own safety concerns with your family and all that. Yeah. What... If you know, if you can talk about it, what is TLS doing right now that you could share for people to understand the type of work that's going on around the world? Because it has been pretty quiet lately in terms of call them operation or mission updates. The last update that I gave was months ago having to do with the underground tunnel system. Is there anything that you can disclose that they're working on big picture without giving too much detail? Well, the reason it's quiet is because they chose not to mention anything. They're not quiet. They're always doing something. I might not know about everything. Obviously, you know, they're working all over the world. I'm just affiliated with the New York office. So, are they doing something? They're doing something all the time. They're doing something for thousands of years. Most of what they do, we'll never know. Because if they're eliminating something or stopping something, you're not going to know about it. It's not going to be on TV. They're not publishing it. I was surprised when they agreed to publish some of the stuff they gave you. I was in shock, as you remember. I didn't. I still don't understand why they did that. And if they did that, why are they continuing with the same force? But this is their decision. I don't... I do not make those decisions. To tell you about detailed jobs, first of all, I don't know as much because I'm based here in New York and I'm working with one boss that handles me. I don't know what's happening in Germany and elsewhere. So I can't tell you something I don't know, even if I know, it's not something I could publish. But they do the same work they've been doing for thousands of years, and, and they just choose to lay low for now. As things come up, fine. We'll see. I don't know. But things... Listen, I just did a job not too long ago. Nothing to do with tunnels. Nobody knew about it. I went... I did my thing for a couple of days. I came back. That's it. We're going back to normal life. The next day, I'm back in my office doing my work, talking to people. Business as usual. Nobody knows what's going on. Nobody's ever going to find out if it's up to me. What does your family think or your friends think when you're gone for a few days? They think I go on vacation. They don't know where I'm going. 
Gotcha. Except my wife. Your wife and other friends within the organization. Yeah, TLS knows, of course, but I'm saying my family family. No, nobody knows what's going on. Got you. Do you believe that at this point, there's obviously a lot of darkness going on in the world in terms of actions, the psychopaths and all mm -hmm. that. Do you believe that they can prevail? Or do you believe that it's our absolute destiny to reach this point of what you refer to as nirvana? Do I think that the psychopaths can prevail? Theoretically, yes. Everything is possible, but I don't think so, no. Why? Because as I told you, I see the shift. I see what TLS is doing. I'm seeing it for the last 12 years. Things are being taken care of. Again, it's not to my taste and liking. I would like to do it in a different way. More aggressive way. Faster. But no, things are being done. It's a great organization. Look, they, 20 years ago, if you told me that spiritually you could move physical things, I would tell you you're out of your mind. But I do it today myself, you understand? Mm -hmm. They are affecting politics in the world, all over the world. They, I can tell you one, one mission I can tell you about that they're working now as we speak. I'm not part of it, but I would like to be part of it. But I just know about it and I have permission to talk about it. One of the goals is, one of the missions is, is to basically eliminate and destroy the United Nations. So this is one thing they're working on. It's a big mission. It will take a lot of time and energy from the organization to do, but I trust them to do the right job because I do believe the United Nations has to be eliminated. It's a corrupt, corrupt agency. When you say eliminated, what actions could be taken to take something like that down? I have no idea, but I'm not talking about blowing up the building, if that's what you mean. No, that's not. I'm not talking about blowing up things. I'm saying eliminate it. Just shut it down. How they're going to do that? I have no clue. I have... I can guess what they can. There are a lot of things they can do. But it's a process that has to coincide with the other processes that they do at the same time. What, so long as they succeed with the operation, what form of a timeline would you give to see something like that come to fruition, according to the plan? Again, I don't know the specifics of the plan, so I can't answer you. I can tell you what I'm sure of. Within 170 years, we are there for sure. No argument. Can it be done now? Within my lifetime? Yes. Can I do it in 30 days? Most of the job, yes. They don't like my plan. Will it be done in your lifetime? Very, very, very possible. Very possible. So I think, look, I'm not a young man anymore. So my lifetime doesn't count. Your lifetime, I think you're going to see great things coming and great changes good changes on the positive side. Yeah, there might be some casualties on the way, but I guess that's part of the process. Because again, if you understand that death doesn't exist, it will not, it's not an issue, you understand? People perceive death as a negative. It's not. It's a process that you have to move on. Will a lot of people die in the process? Maybe. But to me, and I think to TLS, it's not the problem. It's not a big deal. You just move on, because death does not exist. You're being transferred from one entity to another, from one life to another, from one continent to another, planet to planet, whatever you want to call it. So it's a magnificent world, very interesting, very exciting. I'm very glad, very happy, and very proud to say I had the opportunity to be there. I know and I realize and I appreciate the fact that I had this opportunity to get where I got. I'm thankful to God for giving me this opportunity. Again, they could have chosen many other people. I'm a very small part of this, this organization. I'm a speck, but I've seen... I've seen and I experienced so many things. I have no complaints. I have no right to complain. It's just that I'm just the type of person that always wants more. I've never, even as a kid, I'm never satisfied. 
a lot of people want to know what they can do, right? It's great that we can speak about all these topics and that you can share a lot about what's going on with other organizations and forces and powers that are doing certain things on the good side and the dark forces that are doing what they're doing on the not so good side of things. But the main question that I really want to leave people off with from your understanding is what can we do? What can we do as a people to support the mission of TLS? What can we do to support beyond just TLS, to support ourselves as humanity as a whole? So as I said before, unite, make new friends, teach them whatever you can, learn more so you can teach more, and take causes such as Tibet. Tibet is a perfect example. The Chinese are doing to the Tibetan people what Hitler did to the Jews, and worse even, and nobody talks about it. I don't see any government, any government, is talking about it. Because they're scared of the Chinese. By the way, since I mentioned the Chinese, one of the very few places in the world where there's no tunnels is China. I never understood why. Mm. There are no tunnels in China. The entire country. Right. How did they manage to, which is a great thing, how did they manage to do that? I don't know. Because the Chinese government is not the Chinese government. Whoever controls the US and Russia is the same people who control China. How's it being done? I don't know. But I know that Tibet is a major source of energy as well, by the way. And those monasteries, whatever is left, I'm telling you, they took so many monasteries and, and destroyed them in order to destroy religion. But it's more to destroy the Tibetan people. They are one of the most spiritual, naive, and pure people who are left on this earth. And they basically want to destroy them. So yeah, take Tibet as a cause. Make something out of it. You know, I passed the Chinese embassy, 42nd Street in Manhattan, by the west side. Every time I see those Tibetans are standing there demonstrating, you know how they demonstrate? They do meditation. They have signs. Nobody screams. Nobody talks. They meditate, and they have signs about the crimes that the Chinese people are committing against them. Never police, never anything. I think it's amazing how they non-stop. It's for years. It's not something that they started today. For years, they're going and demonstrate. I only see Tibetan people there. Everybody should join. The Chinese Americans, Jewish people, Muslims, and you have to demonstrate and go against the Chinese government. Unlike our government, who lays back in because they are afraid of them. Mm. What are they afraid of? I don't know. But they are afraid of them. And it's not nuclear power, but because most of the Western world has nuclear power. That's not what scares them. Why are you doing business with them? Yeah, by not doing business with them. Would you hurt your own country in a sense? Yes. But if everybody sanctioned China, real sanctions, not like the garbage they're doing with Iran, real sanctions, you're going to see that China will cave in. The people live there under fear, under threat, especially the Tibetans. The Chinese people also, they have no freedom at all. It's not like we have freedom yet. We are, like I told you, we are slaves as well. But they are on a different level, not to mention the Tibetan people. The crimes they're committing are not less than what Hitler did to the Jews. It's just a different form. To speak about solutions again, because I really, I really want to emphasize, and I appreciate what you're saying right now, because it's, it will help people take action and see where they can take action. A lot of people wonder if it's even relevant right now, how they can develop their own spirituality. How do, they access their own, call it supernatural abilities. Does everybody have the potential to access that? A, a big part, as I'm sure you know, of the work that I do is how do we empower people to know that they're as powerful as everything else, right? How, how do we empower them to know that they have that godly force and godly presence within them? Each and every one of them, regardless of your religion, race, ethnicity, age, gender, it doesn't matter. Do you have any suggestions and recommendations from your experiences, from your teachings on how to give people, in a simple way, guidance of how they can develop their own awareness, spirituality, supernatural abilities, 
where can we start? Where, where do we look? Well, everyone has their own power and his own energy. Everybody. It will be easier for some people. It will be harder for some people, but everybody can do something. So some people might move an inch while another will do a mile. But together we can reach the goal we want to get. Basically, get off your asses. Stop watching TV. Stop listening to the media because it's all lies. All lies. Okay? Unite with your friends. Unite with your family. Go out to the street and bring awareness into the people by giving them what you know and by keeping on learning. The learning process. It's a never-ending process. You could never learn too much. There's always something out there to learn. So make yourself a goal, for example. To bet, okay? And you decide that you want to help. There's so many things you can do. There are groups in the United States who are begging for help. And I'm not talking about giving money. Giving money is always good. Yes, fine. Give them money because they need it. But it's to volunteer your time. It's by going out, even if it's cold and snowing and demonstrating and bringing... making noise. You will make noise. It will come to the media. They will have no choice but putting you on. Eventually, they will do it. Look what's happening now, for example, in Europe. Demonstrations regarding the pandemic, okay? Australia. They don't show it on TV. You can only see it on the internet. Ask yourself why. It's because the media is being controlled by the psychopaths. They decide what you're going to see or not. But if this will continue, they're trying to break the people down. But if this will continue in Europe and Israel and Australia, eventually they will have no choice and they will have to reverse their action. And at the same time, maybe groups like TLS would be able to destroy them, take over, and bring a new reality into this world. New government, as we said. New leaders. True leaders. Not politicians. Leaders who are here to do the right thing for themselves, for their families, and for the masses. So, go out, demonstrate, talk, bring people together, stop watching TV. An average person, I think in the U.S., I was told is watching four hours of TV per day. Know what you could do with four hours? A lot. So go to work. You need to make a living. Take care of your family. Take care of your friends. Make a group out of your close friends and connect to other people. Today it's easier. You have Facebook. You have the internet. There are ways you could do it. Not that I like Facebook, but it's a tool you could use. So use it, okay? But the internet gives you a window of opportunity we didn't have a hundred years ago. The information has to go out. Will they censor you? They will censor you. You know that better than anybody else. Will they try to hurt you? Yes. But it's a war. In a war, there are casualties. If you're going to sit down doing nothing, you're done. So at least give it a fighting chance and go out and do something. A lot of people, as they wake up to the truth of what's going on, it's very difficult for them to deal with hearing about certain things. One of the biggest topics that I would say is the hardest for people to come to accept is the situation with the children. It's it's very difficult for for I would say the majority of humanity, they accept certain things as they wake up to it. So coming from you, a person who's seen a lot more than the majority of people, who's experienced a lot more than the majority of people, what suggestion or guidance would you give to the person that's just waking up to all of this? And even those who believe that they're awake, there's a whole lot more that's going to be coming out. How would you, what would you say to those people to make that process easier on them, to be able to deal with this darkness and, and the awareness of the, this darkness in a better way? There's no good way to deal with this information. I can tell you that I'm, I still have nightmares about the things I've seen because it is gruesome. It's, you can't understand how one human can do something like this to any human, especially a child. But again, you're dealing with psychopaths. As I said before, you fight them through awareness. By gaining awareness through yourself. 
at spreading the word, giving it to other people. The only way it could be done is by regrouping, uniting, making a lot of noise. Go out there, demonstrate. If you have to stop traffic in order to get attention, that's fine. Again, I would not go and, and use violence. Absolutely not. Unless violence is being used against you. Okay? But you do not use violence. But if you want to disrupt society to wake them up, that's fine. If you want to stop traffic, I don't see a problem with this. Okay. If you want to go to your to the politicians' homes, that's a great tool. Great tool. Go to their homes. Every Saturday. And drive everybody crazy. Including their neighbors. Okay? Wake people up. Hmm. Because crimes are being committed as we speak in every place. In almost every place. It's in every state here in the United States. It's in Europe, Israel, Australia, Africa, wherever you go. It's being done, supposedly, by the politicians. The politicians are not doing anything. They are puppets. They're being told what to do, and they follow orders. But this is crimes against humanity. People are suffering. People are losing their livelihood. People are dying needlessly. People are being poisoned systematically. You know, that's the sad thing. The poisons, most of them go and ask for the poison. It's not being forced on you. Almost not being forced on you. Most of the people, yeah, sure. Because they trust the system. Again, people don't mean to do harm themselves. They really believe in the system. They believe that the government is looking for their own benefit. They believe that the politician they vote for are looking for their benefit. No, they're not. Politicians are looking for their own benefit only, their own power, and to stay in power. Mm. This is not something new. This is something that's going on for many, many centuries. It's time for us to wake up because we, otherwise we're going to a very bad place. But I'm telling you, I know there's a way out. It is possible. It will be done. The question now is how long it's going to take. One year or a hundred years? That's the difference. Do you have hope for where we're headed? Yes. Like I told you before, I know it's going to be done. The only thing I'm pissed off at is the timing. Like, I'd like to see it now. Hmm. I believe it can be done faster. Maybe my way is more radical. It's more thinking out of the box. I agree. My way might cause more chaos in the very near future. But it will stop the madness and we can move on. But again, if... I need people to agree with me. Nobody agrees with me. My own people don't agree with me, so I can't... I, I can't... I can't do anything about it. Most of the viewers agree with you, because that's where we're at collectively. But as our conversations always end up, I always say, listen, and you know this, which is why I'm surprised why you still hold your ground on that. You know very well that you could take out, execute, do whatever you want, take out Hitler, but Hitler wasn't the problem. People elected him into power. People allowed him to do what he was doing. People turned a blind eye when he was killing, killing millions and millions and millions of people. So you could take out whoever you want. If you don't change the masses, it's not going to change anything. So I understand you're saying them do it all. You're saying do it all together. But they are doing it all together. TLS is doing physical missions, physical operations, taking out certain tunnels freeing certain children, taking out certain people, stopping certain people from doing things, infiltrating the monster, and doing while doing all of that, they're also raising awareness on the planet through the many, many different mediums that they do everything through. So it's surprising to me, I understand your point, but it's surprising to me when you say that because you know very well that you could take out whoever you want. If the people don't change, those people are going to be replaced. Everything you said is true. The only difference is that they are moving too slow. That's all I said. You want to move faster. I want to move faster. That's all I said. That's the only difference. I think we can move faster if people decide to make a change. Meaning, don't a lot of people I'm seeing, they're blaming the media for the problem. What about blaming ourselves for turning on the TV? I agree. But if, let's say tomorrow, you want to do it my way and you... At the end of the day, within 10 to 30 days... I'm not exaggerating. Believe me, 30 days, it can be done. And you bring some of the people that are still alive that you didn't eliminate yet. You bring them to court, and you put them on the stand. 
and you show the entire world the real story, people are going to become aware much faster than the way you're doing it. You understand? So yeah, you keep you keep some of them as a show for the court, but make it a real court, not the circus we have today. Bring them to court. Bring the proof. Show everything that they've done. Put them on trial. Do you believe that if the majority of people through feedback and through action show that through their freedom of choice, that's what they want to happen. They want to go full force at these people. Do you believe that TLS may change their ways and make it happen faster? Yes, I believe so, of course. Listen, the court of public opinion is always affecting everybody. The good guys and the bad guys. And yes, if people are going to speak up, I think they're going to see. I think we will see a change much faster because it has to affect it. It has to affect everybody. But for that, you need to speak up. You need to go out to the streets. You need to talk to your people, to talk to your community, to talk to your community leaders that some of them are. Again, they're so ignorant and they're so unaware of what's going on that they do believe. And I'm talking to you about politicians, doctors, lawyers. They don't mean bad. When the doctors give you the poison that they're selling, He's not trying to kill you. He thinks he's doing the right thing. But there's nobody. They are so brainwashed. And I'm talking to a lot of doctors. They are so brainwashed. You can't get to them. You understand? They're not only giving you the poison to you. They're giving it to themselves. To their own children. Because they convinced them that this, this is good medicine. There's no such thing as good medicine in this world. Most of it is garbage. Most of it. I'm not going to say everything, but most of it is garbage. A doctor became a legal drug dealer in this country. Not just here. All over the world. They're legal drug dealers. This is what they do. But they don't have the understanding because they brainwashed them. Not from today. They brainwashed them from before they even went to medical school. Who controls the universities and medical schools? I don't have to say names. You know it's the same people who are making you sick. Giving you the poison. And then they give you the medicine because you got sick from the poison. They give you to begin with. It's non-stop. Making money. Taking control of your life. This is the brainwashing. Now, the same student who went to medical school, by the time he got out, he's finally working and starting to make money. He has a loan of 500000 to a million dollars of student loan. Now he's worried about how I got to pay this loan. So he's not going to deal with. Maybe there's another way of curing people. No, he has to make money to pay the loans, to pay his mortgage for his house. He has a wife and kids. Do you understand how the system works? It's brainwashing, and I'm speaking to a lot of people who are, I'm telling you, doctors who are close to me, they have no clue of what's going on. They have no clue, because they believe in the system. Besides, for them to make a move, it's meaning they have to give up everything they believe in for the last 30 years that they went to school for. They have to take a risk on their livelihood because most of them will get fired or they lose their jobs or whatever. They lose their business and they're afraid. I understand. So I want to sum up the, the message that you've given, which is a lot of information and experience coupled with a lot of, I would call, awareness for what we can do and actions we can take moving forward. And to sum it all up, I, I really want to emphasize the fact that you all have the power to do something. Ray is sitting here in front of me right now because that's part of his job. And part of his job is to share things to empower each and every one of you, to show you that, yeah, has he gone through certain things? Has he seen very, very dark things in the world? Absolutely. But he's sharing that not to make you sad or afraid. He's sharing that right now to shed light and to raise awareness for what's going on because you can't fix a problem if you don't know that the problem exists. So the purpose of this interview is to show you what's going on in the world from a firsthand experience. Whether you want to believe it or not is completely up to you. The only thing that we can do, like Ray said, is not convince you. All we can do is share information. And what you do with that information is up to you and your own free will. But I encourage each and every one of you to understand that you are powerful. You are empowered. You are not a victim. You are the creator of this reality. This isn't about blaming others for the world that we're living in. It's about taking responsibility and understanding that we live in the world that we live in because we allowed this to happen. Now the question is, what are we going to do next? Are we going to sit here and play victim? 
Are we going to say no? Okay, we understand what's going on. We understand that maybe we have not taken enough action up until this point. And from this point moving forward, we're going to make a change. From this point moving forward, we're going to say no, enough is enough. We're going to take action. We're going to unite. We're going to face the things that are very uncomfortable to face. We're going to face the very realities that exist in this world that make us uncomfortable because they're very dark with the intention of shedding light on the darkness, to illuminate the darkness, so we can once and for all live in a world of light, of peace, of love, of harmony, of unity, of really coming together in the world that we deserve to live in. So with that, I'm going to leave you all with that message to understand that you are in power. You are not the victim. We have never been the victims, and we have the power to make a change right here, right now, in our lifetimes, if we choose to do that. With that being said, I want to thank you, Ray, for coming here again, for giving us hours of your time today, sharing your experiences, information, and information beyond just what's going on in the world, but what we can do to really make a change. I appreciate you. I love you. And I thank you. You're welcome. Thank you.